Ukraine is a leader in the use of FPV drones. One of the main reasons for this is the fundamentally different approach to the production of this weapon in the two warring countries, writes Forbes. Small unmanned aerial vehicles, particularly kamikazes with sights, have become a key weapon in the war of attrition currently being waged in Ukraine. A NATO official recently told Foreign Policy magazine that FPVs have caused more than two-thirds of Russian tank losses in recent months, eclipsing artillery, guided missiles, and other weapons. It comes as Ukraine steps up its use of kamikaze drones on the front line in a bid to crush Vladimir Putin's forces. Soldier appears to be hit by drone strike whilst relieving himself in Kherson. Shocking new video has emerged that shows a Russian soldier hit by a Ukrainian kamikaze drone while he was relieving himself near the front lines. The unfortunate soldier is caught with his pants down squatting near an armored vehicle as the drone approaches. First-person view footage from the drone shows it approaching the Russian before the shot switches to the soldier squatting behind the vehicle. The soldier notices the incoming drone and tries to flee, pulling up his pants and running but he is too late and is engulfed in an explosion. It's impossible to tell from the unverified video if the Russian soldier survived or was injured. Ukraine and Russia have increasingly been using first-person view drones to target each other's forces on the front lines to devastating effect. Away from the front lines, Russia has regularly targeted Ukrainian cities and civilian infrastructure with Iranian-made suicide drones. Ukraine has responded in kind with several strikes inside Russia, including in the capital of Moscow. The news comes as Russia continues to launch assaults in eastern Ukraine around the destroyed settlement of Andrivka near Bakhmut. Russian forces advanced in both areas, according to the Institute for the Study of War (ISW). Both sides continue to mount attacks despite the snowy and rainy weather impeding movement, the think tank added. The ISW added that it continues to assess that freezing weather conditions during the winter will likely prompt the resumption of more active combat operations in Ukraine, and ongoing rainy weather is unlikely to halt Ukrainian or Russian attacks. The fighting continues amid comments by Vladimir Putin that seem to suggest Russia would be open to conducting peace talks with Ukraine. Kiev has, however, said that Ukraine would not give up any occupied territory to Russia, including Crimea, likely to be a sticking point on both sides. Ukraine's NATO allies have signaled their willingness to continue to supply Kiev until its war goals were met. Both countries now produce massive amounts of unmanned aerial vehicles, but recently, Russian drone strikes on the battlefield have been on the wane while Ukrainian drone strikes have been on the rise like never before. What is the reason for Russia's failure? The FPV drone, a small racing quadcopter turned kamikaze, is a low-cost precision weapon capable of hitting tanks and other targets from 20 kilometers away. They have proven to be equally effective against artillery, infantry positions, and trucks. As 2023 progressed and thousands of FPVs were deployed, both sides began to appreciate just how important this new weapon was becoming. However, 
approaches to drone production in Ukraine and Russia are quite different. In Ukraine, this is a highly decentralized industry, with the Ministry of Defense purchasing drones from dozens of relatively small manufacturers. What's more, there is even an initiative in Ukraine where several thousand volunteers assemble drones at home in their spare time. At the same time, in Russia, the system is highly centralized. While there are small teams out there making drones themselves, their scale is small and they are funded mainly by citizen donations. However, the majority of the tens of thousands of unmanned aerial vehicles that the Russian military receives are produced by just one company, the so-called Pseudoplatova Group. It was this company that received billions of rubles from the state budget for the production of unmanned aerial vehicles. Soviet-style centralization can lead to economies of scale. But the Soviet system also had huge flaws, and these may be at the root of their dramatic decline in FPV performance, Forbes writes.